morning, this is Lena with The Growing Gardener and today is May 23rd and a lot has been going on in my garden since my April tour. Um, April showers did bring May flowers, that and a lot of other new growth so I'm really excited to get started and show you all of the new things. So before we get started, you may notice a big, the biggest difference since last month is that I mulched. Now mulching is something that I was really apprehensive to do um, because I had mixed reviews about it introducing weed seeds to the garden. I also kept hearing a resounding yes, mulch. It holds in moisture. It keeps the soil temperature from getting too hot, which is a big problem here in Southern California. And so I decided to go ahead and give it a try. I heard that oat straw doesn't have a lot of weed seeds, but so I went ahead and give it a try and I mulched about two weeks ago. The results, I, I would say overall I'm glad that I did. It definitely is holding the moisture in. And I haven't seen any more weed seeds, but you can see there's a lot of oat seeds sprouting. But it is doing a good job of holding in the moisture. And that's a really important factor here. I don't have to water near as often. Alright, so let's start here where I usually do. Um, so down here is the pink dandelion. Can you tell us about it, Max? This is a dandelion is planted from us because I like to blow, to blow the seed. But what's special about this one? Is that it's a pink dandelion. Yeah. It's a pink dandelion from Baker's Creek Seed. So that's fun. So this is a big one. Last month's tour, I had no zucchini sprouted yet. Um, it had been really chilly. I had tried three times to plant zucchini and it, they had not come up. So since last month, these have not only sprouted, but grown to this size, and they look like they are going to put on some blooms soon. So down here is some beautiful alyssum that I planted from seed. It just took off and has been blooming and smelling wonderful. This nasturtium has been blooming and doing pretty good. Back here is a pepper, a bell pepper. So down here is the butternut squash. The warm weather just did make it just take off. And I was considering trying to make some kind of a trellis for it to grow vertically, but I don't really have the materials this year. So instead, I'm leaving some empty space back there along the bed and hoping that it'll just trail out there and maybe curve back around. Who knows how long it'll get before it starts setting fruit. There's been no flowers on it yet. And look at these sunflowers. They are chest high. This one is anyway. This one is chest high to me right now. So right here is an exciting new addition. This is a O'Neill blueberry bush that we bought for my son Max's fifth birthday, which happened to be on Arbor Day. So back here, I have some okra. It doesn't look like it's doing very well. It should be growing really quickly. I'm not sure why. Down here, this is interesting. These are the green onions that I put in the ground from store-bought onions. I've been harvesting the green tops and it'll regrow more and I may never have to buy green onions again. Here is a jalapeno. It's getting some little flower buds on it. See 
See there? This is a mini bell tomato that I had to transplant out of a hanging basket because it was just getting too big. It seems to be pretty happy here, setting lots of flowers. So last month I mentioned that I had a Paul Robeson tomato that had overwintered and that I had cut off all of its suckers and basically threw out the rest of the plant, but I propagated about 10 other plants from it, and here is one of them. It's doing really well, but I didn't have enough garden space for it, so I put it in here in this pot with some or, uh, kitchen scraps in the bottom quarter and then cheap potting soil on top, so its roots will go down right into that compost and will probably take off like this one. This one is planted the same way. This is a yellow pear tomato. It's setting lots of fruit. And this container is also planted with kitchen scraps in the bottom quarter and potting soil on top. So this is definitely, these roots have reached down into the kitchen compost and it has just exploded in growth. It is huge compared to what it was last month. So here is my little experimental bed. I had been harvesting lettuce out of here last month and I had mentioned that there were really bad aphids in the bottom, like in the center of each plant. I had plant transplanted them out of their winter uh, barrel and planted them in here and within a few days they had gotten overrun with aphids. And I used a little bit of a soap spray on them, but it didn't seem to help. They didn't die right away. They just left over the course of like a week. It kind of took care of itself and I'm not exactly sure why. Here is a bolted lettuce. This lettuce has gone to seed and I was going to try to harvest the seed and use it for salad mix next year but we had some baby squirrel problems. Some ground squirrels got in here and ate the tops off of all of these lettuce except for, what, four plants? Five plants? This Elysium is doing well. So pretty. Also, I have, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a netting draped over my sunflowers because those baby squirrels demolished some of them. So, I just have this draped over there and they haven't been bothered since. So I learned something just a few days ago. This is uh, Sweet William. I planted three of these Sweet William plants hoping for some uh, pretty flower display from them, thinking they were annuals. And I was noticing that while all my other wild flowers are starting to bloom, these have no sign of buds at all. So I looked it up and discovered that Sweet Williams don't bloom until their second year. So that's that. These guys will be in here quite a while, I guess. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this bed. This um, small garden bed was, un I wasn't able to grow anything like peppers or tomatoes in it. Um, the first few years that I tried. Part of it was the time of year. I planted them at the wrong time. But I also did a soil test um, after I got really frustrated and found out that this bed had too much nutrients. And I was surprised to discover that that is just as detrimental as not having enough nutrients. What are you supposed to do when your garden bed has too much nutrients? The only thing I could think of was to dilute the soil by mixing it with poorer quality soil. Since I'm a new gardener, I didn't want to risk planting any of my vegetables in here again and having them die. So this is my experimental bed. I, I decided to just plant flowers in here 
and try to use up the extra nutrient. And so next year I'll be able to amend it back up and hopefully plant some vegetables in here. Good morning, sun. I like to film at this time of morning because the sun slants through the leaves and makes it look romantic. So here, this used to be spinach just last month, and a few days ago I pulled up all the spinach that was bolting. I might save this one to try to see if I can collect the seeds, but I, ha I was given some, some purple cow peas, this one and back there. Uh, somebody on Facebook Market was wanting to trade seeds, and so I gave him some Virginia peanuts that I had bought for planting, and he gave me some purple cow peas. Now we both have a little more variety in our garden. So over here are some flat of Italy purple onions. There's my strawberries, some of them, and the kids will enjoy coming out here and picking these later today. I think I see a big one back there. I've been impressed with the size. They're, I've been watering them with fish emulsion every, uh, every few weeks, and they seem to be enjoying that. There's, there's three good red strawberries in there. Oh, I think I see a fourth. Which one are you going to eat first? This one. Mm. You want to pick it, Dora? Let me see, Dora. Let me see it. Dora. Good job. Strawberry. Why are we like? Can you say strawberry again? So here's my kale. It's still going strong. We've been juicing it. And it tastes way better than the store-bought kale. I don't know if it's the variety or that it's homegrown or that it's fresher, but it is really good, really tasty. So this is the embarrassing confessions that I have to make. I have been warned that new gardeners can kill their garden with love, and I still fell into that trap. <laughs> My poor tomato plants, I planted out in the garden, and when it started to heat up, I watered them every day, if not twice a day, and now they're overwatered and struggling to survive. <laughs> so this poor guy has been overwatered. I thought it was blight. I thought it was bad soil, but no, it is it is my fault. I this damage, I don't know if you can see it very well, but the curled leaves, the blackened tips, the dropping of the fruit is from too much water. It caused root rot. And I have hope. I've heard that if I leave them be, they will heal and might yet produce a crop. As embarrassing as it is to have to share this with you, I, I think it's important for me to confess my sins so that I can learn from it in the future. All right, so here is my broccoli plant, one last broccoli plant that I left in so that it could finish going to seed. And my goodness, look at all those seeds. Each one of these pods might hold about 
20 seeds and it is just laden with these pods. Another good surprise in the garden is that we have been having a lot of ladybug visitors. I have had really bad aphid problems in the past, especially on my squash plants, and I thought I was going to have to buy some ladybugs around the middle of summer when the aphids are the worst, but I don't know if it's my wildflower patch or what, but I've been having a lot of ladybugs taking up home in my garden, and, and for that I'm very grateful. They've been doing a good job. So again, this is the same spot that I had a Paul Robeson last month. I had the remains of the Paul Robeson that I had cut all the suckers off. And since then, I have rooted those suckers. I have sold those suckers on Facebook Market and I have kept this one and its friend over there. And this one is also suffering from overwatering. <laughs> but before it did, before it curled up and said please no more, it grew quite a bit. It's already there to the second or to the first rung of, of the tomato cage. Here's a few more strawberries. I'm so pleased with the size of these. Look at that. Sun. There we go. Here's some more kale. Getting some leaf yellowing. I'm not sure if that's from overwatering as well. This tomato is a determinant, which means it's not going to keep growing and growing. It's a mini bell. It produces small red tomatoes, and it's only it's not going to get much bigger. And for that reason, I'm worried about all of this yellow foliage from me overwatering. Like I think it's done growing, and all of this yellow foliage might not have a chance to heal itself. Oh, I do have a few little tomatoes. Here's my St. Pierre tomato. It has really shot up since last month. We had some warm weather and it got plenty of water. <laughs> you can also see some damage here. But in spite of it all, it has set a few fruits. Down here in the onion patch is my one little marigold that I got to sprout. It'll be pretty there in the corner. Down here is my pride and joy. I'm so excited to see this grow. This is a Virginia peanut. And it has sprouted since my last tour. And looks like it's doing really well. And I am really excited to watch a peanut grow. So this is my wild flower garden. And I am so glad that I planted this. It has brought me so much joy and it is getting ready to just burst forth. They've had a few blooms and every one of them is new and exciting and I don't know what it's gonna be. And I have a bunch of poppies some of them I bought from Baker's Creek Seed. They're called Mother of Pearl Poppies and they are getting ready to bloom and I am so excited. They are such a beautiful looking flower, at least from the pictures. If they peak during the month of June, I will make sure to document that because that is something I've been long anticipating. So, I'll just give you some footage of all of these beautiful wildflowers that I've been enjoying for the past few weeks. California poppy. The shape of the pod behind that flower reminds me of a fairy. Here are some of my poppy buds getting ready to bloom. Here is my 
best mini bell tomato. I ironically, it's the one that's in a pot that I thought it was too big to be growing in and I transplanted the others out of their pots into the garden and they are struggling. <laughs> This one is still in its pot because I was waiting to put it where the current uh, broccoli is, but I'm waiting for the broccoli seed pods to dry out, so I left this in its pot, and look at all of the fruit on this thing. This one is doing better than any of them, maybe partially because it hasn't been transplanted, Look at all that. And then right next to the wildflowers is the children's playhouse and these two barrels that I mentioned last month that I hope to put a bench in between there for the kids to sit and watch the bees and the butterflies and, and have a little area to sit on. There's a, a homemade trellis just out of some fencing. And I have over here some morning glories and some bush baby watermelon. This is a watermelon plant and watermelons grow up and the watermelon fruits are this big. Yeah. And but see, see this little arm? This little arm is a vine. That arm is holding on to... to to a shrillis so it can go grow way way up <laughs> yep I'm not sure exactly how tall this one will be because it's a bush variety but it does have little tendrils yep. and it's starting to starting to take off <laughs> and whenever I go outside I always want to see it because <laughs> it's so cute <laughs> <laughs> Just like you, huh? Yep. This is Malabar spinach. It's a not a true spinach, but it is a vining edible that apparently resembles spinach. I've never tasted it before, but I've heard about it, and it sounds like a really good thing to grow in this area for a green. Like, lettuce obviously bolts and is, not, is inedible during the hot months of this area. And Malabar spinach apparently loves the heat, so I'm going to try it, but apparently something likes Malabar spinach too. Because the first time that I sprouted these, something got into this barrel. I assumed it was a bird because this is so high off the ground, and topped them off. and ate the leaves so I and it had destroyed two out of three so I put this netting on it to keep the birds out which goes over the top and the next day the third one was topped off <laughs> and the leaves were laying next to it with some nibble marks out of them and I still, to this day, don't know exactly what it was. I, maybe it was a rat? It did happen at night, and the creature was done with the Malabar and then started coming in here and nibbling on the first leaves of this watermelon. So I've started using these cups to cover the seedlings at night, and that seems to have helped a lot. So over here on the patio is my makeshift plant nursery. I've got all my gazanias up potted out of their little cells into solo cups. I, my hope is to let these get a good root system in here and then they'll probably stay in here all summer and then in the winter or spring I will plant them out on our front hill and they'll have a good solid root system so if the rabbits eat these leaves off they will come back. I know from experience from my other flowers that they're pretty tenacious and so once they have a good root system they'll be able to withstand the rabbits better 
and also it'll be raining more at that time of year so I won't have to water them as much. It's really hard for me to water these on the hill out front since I don't have a drip irrigation or anything and I spray the hose on it and the water just runs down into our driveway. It's really frustrating. And my mint and lemon balm has just taken off. I've even harvested a big bunch of mint and made tea and the kids love it. I'm going to try some cinnamon basil, I'm getting ready for that to sprout, hopefully. So this is new from last month, and I did post a video of my succulent bed renovation. This was just bare dirt last month. This pot here was full of succulents. So I took out most of them and didn't know where to put them and I decided to put them in this bed. I've added to it I've put some mulch down which I think looks really nice and some really cool rocks that we have around the property and some that I brought with me from different walks of life. Is it cool? And some really nice people on Facebook market offered to give me lots of succulent cuttings. This is one that I was given. This is one that I was given. Some more jade. I bought this Dusty Miller on sale at Walmart. I hope it does well because I love, I love this stuff. I was given this little guy from the lady on Facebook Market some twin sisters spider plant this one I was given variegated jade I think here's my makeshift rabbit protection they uh, still got in there and ate some leaves but this is another succulent that I was given uh, we were actually on a walk and somebody we were admiring the flowers and the lady said well take one they, they grow like weeds and then a really quick update on my succulent cuttings it has been oh golly three weeks three weeks since we put these in here and look at this the miracle is happening look at that there's a tiny little plant on there with the roots coming out the side see that well thank you for joining me for another garden tour on the Growing Gardener. It's been really fun to show you everything that's been going on and I hope you will hit subscribe so that you can watch next month's garden tour as well. And until then, God bless and have a great month.